asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. There's only one story really to talk about, I suppose, and we, we spent a lot of time talking about this yesterday on Sunday View. Let me just bring up the BBC there. Russia, as you would have heard in the news there with Kevin Ozebek, Russia is saying that there is no evidence of a chemical weapons attack in the formerly rebel-held town of Duma. Sergei Lavrov, Russian's foreign minister, has spoken out strongly and said that Russian specialists and aid workers had gone to the area which rebel fighters have started leaving under a surrender deal. No evidence, he said. However, medical sources, and this is the white helmets, of course, the very dubious white helmets, but also the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, who's a t-shirt seller in Coventry, believe it or not, they've said that a chemical attack killed dozens and dozens of people on Saturday. But they say numbers are impossible to verify. This stinks, of course, but what do I know? U.S. President Donald Trump about two hours ago had this to say on the alleged attack. I'd like to begin by condemning the heinous attack on innocent Syrians with banned chemical weapons. It was an atrocious attack. It was horrible. You don't see things like that as bad as the news is around the world. You just don't see those images. We are studying that situation extremely closely. We are meeting with our military and everybody else. And we'll be making some major decisions over the next 24 to 48 hours. We are very concerned when a thing like that can happen. This is about humanity. We're talking about humanity. And it can't be allowed to happen. So we'll be... uh, looking at that barbaric act and studying what's going on. We're trying to get people in there. As you know, it's been surrounded, so it's very hard to get people in because not only has it been hit, it's been surrounded. And if they're innocent, why aren't they allowing people to go in and prove? Because as you know, they're claiming they didn't make the attack. So if it's Russia, if it's Syria, If it's Iran, if it's all of them together, we'll figure it out and we'll know the answers quite soon. So we're looking at that very, very strongly and very seriously. Yeah, warmongering Donald Trump. Now, I wrote an article about this today. It's on richieallen.co.uk. In fact, I've just tweeted it out now. It's an article about Trump who, while campaigning to secure the Republican nomination, for the presidency in April 2016, so pretty much two years ago exactly, Trump just said logic, he said in his first major foreign policy address, here's what Trump said word for word. I could have got the audio, but I wanted to read this to you. This is what he said. Logic was replaced with foolishness and arrogance, which led to one foreign policy disaster after another. They just kept coming and coming. We went from mistakes in Iraq to Egypt to Libya to Obama's line in the sand in Syria. Each of these actions have helped to throw the region into chaos and gave ISIS the space it needs to grow and prosper very bad. It all began with a dangerous idea that we could make Western democracies out of countries that had no experience or interest in becoming a Western democracy. We tore up what institutions they had. And then we were surprised at what we unleashed. Civil war, religious fanaticism, thousands of Americans and just killed, uh, yes, thousands of Americans killed and uh, many more lives wasted, horribly wasted. Trillions of dollars wasted as well. This was Trump in April 2016 and you just heard Trump in April 2018. I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. This is what happens when you trust the two-party system or the four-party system or the five-party system. You just get more of the same. 
Theresa May, the UK Prime Minister, up to her neck in war crimes in Yemen. What did May have to say? She is, by the way. Um, looking at statistics to do with Yemen today, the Red Cross and other agencies saying that maybe 100 children a day dying in that country, and that's not recently. You're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of children. May was meeting with the Danish Prime Minister, as far as I can remember. What did she have to say about the alleged chemical weapon attack? The UK utterly condemns the use of chemical weapons in any circumstances, and we must urgently establish what happened on Saturday. If confirmed, this is yet another example of the Assad regime's brutality and brazen disregard for its own people and for its legal obligations not to use these weapons. If they are found to be responsible, the regime and its backers, including Russia, must be held to account. The events in Douma fit into a troubling wider pattern of acts of aggression and abuse of long-standing international norms on counterproliferation and the use of chemical weapons. In recent years, Russia's repeated vetoes at the UN have enabled these rules to be broken and removed mechanisms that allow us to investigate and hold to account chemical weapons attacks in Syria. This must stop. And we will work closely with our allies, including at the UN Security Council later today, to ensure the international community strengthens its resolve to deal with those who are responsible for carrying out these barbaric attacks and who allow global norms to be breached in such an appalling way. Mm, Global norms, what a crock of shit that is global norms shared values there's no evidence none that the syrian government has decided to in an area that rebels were leaving because they've been beaten back because assad has turned the tide not just today not yesterday not last week but for the better part of a year and a half government forces backed by the russians quite rightly have begun to turn the tide and are eliminating the Wahhabi nutters sent into the country to destroy it. So why would he decide to deploy chlorine, gas or whatever the bloody hell against his own civilians? He wouldn't, of course. You wouldn't do it. You wouldn't. Even the baddest bastard in the world wouldn't do it. Because there's nothing to gain by doing it. Right? Had Terry, the pathological lawyer, May, any more to say? Anything more interesting? Calling way. We saw a similar recklessness last month with the use of chemical weapons on the streets of Salisbury. Wow, chemical weapons on the streets of Salisbury. Let me tell you this, and I can say this with no fear of contradiction whatsoever. Nobody deployed chemical weapons on the streets of Salisbury. Nobody. Nobody. She should be strung up in chains, hogtied, and arrested for treason and for crimes against humanity and for attempting to lie this country into a military conflict with Russia. She should be in prison. This scumbag, fucking lying, warmongering... Right? Chemical weapons deployed on the streets of Salisbury. What a lie! Even if somebody from Russia did put some stuff on the front door of the Skripals, which is a joke, by the way. It's an absolute joke. That scenario is ridiculous. It's beyond preposterous. Even if they did put some sort of agent, some sort of poison that would, when ingested, would cause capitulation and collapse, internal organ, all that sort of stuff. It's not deploying chemical weapons on the streets of Salisbury, is it? Huh? Terry May there. Lock her up. Lock them all up. Here's something very interesting. We talked about this three and a half weeks ago. On St. Patrick's Day, which is the 17th of March, by the way, Russia today ran a news item where a Russian general was amongst those interviewed who claimed that the Americans were actually supplying the so-called moderate rebel groups in Syria, the ones that are left, with chemical weapons. And on St. Patrick's Day, the Russians claimed those chemical weapons would be used, it would be blamed on Assad, and it would be used as justification for airstrikes on the country. In fact, you'll hear a Russian general now in a second called Sergei Rudskoy. He even says the ships to launch the cruise missiles or the Tomahawk missiles or whatever are already in the Mediterranean. 
So three and a half weeks ago, the Russians predicted this very scenario. They said a false flag chemical attack would be staged by the rebels using chemical agents given to, given to them by the Yanks, by Yankee Doodle. Listen to the news report from St. Patrick's Day. Have a listen, it's very interesting. Russia's defence ministry says rebel groups have been armed with chemical weapons in Syria and are planning to stage false flag attacks as a pretext for the US to carry out airstrikes. Representatives of the Russian armed forces have said they have information, reason to believe that the United States, that its Al Tanf base in Syria, has been preparing squads of rebels, fighters, to stage a chemical provocation, a chemical weapons attack in the south of Syria, in Daraa, which borders Jordan and Israel. They've been uh, provided allegedly. Uh, as many as 20 tons of chlorine, as well as detonators disguised as uh, disguised as cigarette packs, and uh, this attack is imminent. Defense officials have said that this attack will be blamed on the Syrian government and will be used as an excuse by the United States and its allies to strike at Bashar al-Assad, his government, and his military directly. The provocations mentioned will be used as a pretext for the United States and its allies to conduct airstrikes against military and state infrastructure in Syria. We are seeing that such strikes are being prepared by warships in the Mediterranean, the Red Sea and in the Persian Gulf. Yeah, that last voice you heard was Sergei, Sergei Rudskoy, the Russian general. They said this on St. Patrick's Day. Now, I know what the Americans would say. They would say that was a Catherine Trammell play. Who's Catherine Trammell, Richie? Well, she's the anti-hero in Basic Instinct. You remember? The murderess. Sharon Stone played the murderess Catherine Trammell in Basic Instinct. I'd have to be pretty stupid to write about killing somebody in a book and then go and kill somebody in exactly the way I described it in my book. Michael Douglas says, well, maybe that was your alibi. So that's what the Americans will say. Oh, the Russians knew they were going to do it, so they put this story out three and a half weeks ago. No! The Russians were telling the truth. Warships are in the med. Tomahawk missiles ready to go. The so-called moderate rebels being given these chemical agents for just such a scenario. Use a chemical agent. Take some photographs of children fighting for their breath. And then we have the pretext. We have all the justification we need to go and start bombing in Syria. What are we going to do about this? What are we going to do about it? Talk about it till we're dead? These people belong in prison. Is it going to come to violence, I wonder? And I'm totally anti-violence, and I mean that completely. Is it going to come to violence where we're going to have to take up arms against these people before they bring this madness to our front doors? And for 22 people in Manchester last May, it was brought right to their doors, wasn't it? Lunatics, criminals, scum, gangsters. It's dreadful, this. And I'm not shouting for effect. This is not a performance. It's crippling me watching this garbage, listening to it every day, these lies. Chemical weapons deployed on the streets of Salisbury, eh? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Interestingly enough, Sky News, they must, they must have some very inexperienced producers at Sky News because they invited a man on called Adam Mardini and he's a former Syrian diplomat. And some bright spark in the production offices at Sky News must have assumed that because he's a former Syrian diplomat and because he's now living in the UK, they must have thought he'd be anti-government. <laughs> they maybe should have checked. So Sky News interviewed him, this is what he had to say about the chemical weapons attack in Douma, the alleged attack, and what should be done about it. Needless to say, Adam Mardini will never be on Sky News again. Nobody, no. I mean, I said that and I warned these chemical attacks could take place in the future because ISIS could, use, could, could have used the chemical attacks. Uh, the uh, American, uh, uh, by the Syrian back uh, uh, individuals could have could use could use them as well. Uh, the, the the Syrian regime. I'm not, I'm not saying they could not use them, but we need a credible investigation to take place and to know 
to, to, to really to know who did that act. Good man. He said the American-backed rebels could have done it. I'm not saying the regime didn't do it, he said, but, you know, why would they do it? We need a proper investigation, he said. And then on that, we can make our decision. Uh, the international would, community can make it. And you would presumably want uh, that investigation before any sort of military thought was put in terms of, of an attack on Syria? Military, military action is not going to work. And that is from, from in, in, if you take previous experiences, it failed in Afghanistan, it, it failed in, in Iraq, and it is failing in Syria now. So what is the answer? Well, basically the Americans, the French, the Israelis, and the UK special forces operating in Syria, they should get the fuck out of the country and leave it alone. That's the answer. The answer is that we need a political will to end this conflict, bloody conflict in Syria. It is, America can bring this to an end by the power of diplomacy. We should not confront Russia, Iran. We should build uh, bridges of dialogue, constructive dialogue to bring this crisis into an end. Yeah, he said we shouldn't be confronting Russia and Iran. Who else did he say? Russia and Iran, he said. We, sh or, and Syria, we shouldn't be confronting them. Very good. They won't be asking him on to Sky News ever again. That was his one and only appearance. It's 21 and a half minutes past the hour. This is Monday's Richie Allen show. Mass, non-violent, civil disobedience, folks. It's what it's got to be. Um, violence begets violence. I said this in an article I wrote today. Violence is what they want because it gives them the excuse to come down heavy-handed and even more heavy-handed, massive non-violent civil disobedience is the only answer. And that begins with the individual.